Well, I'm just about to do a tank chat on the Coventry Armoured Car. If you like tank chats, why not subscribe to the Tank Museum channel and watch them all? Now, what we're looking at here is the Coventry Armoured Car. And Coventry is quite an odd name for an armoured car. In fact, they were a design put together out of um, sort of other people's designs and partly used Daimler and Roots Group information to make this vehicle. It wasn't all that good, but we'll come to that in a minute. But this is it, the Coventry. It weighed about 11 and a half tonnes, which is quite heavy for an armoured car, but that was because they rather tried to stick everything on it except the kitchen sink, and I'm not even sure about that. It's powered by a Hercules engine, a six-cylinder Hercules in the back. Why they used an American engine, we're not too sure, but presumably they had nothing British that would suit. And it was a petrol engine by Hercules, stuck in the back there, a straight six. It drove through a five-speed gearbox, of which four of the speeds were synchro mesh. They didn't use synchro mesh on the first gear because it was only used for hill climbing and that sort of thing. Something sort of quite powerful, but very slow. So the other four gears were the normal driving gears. It drove through them. It had separate forward and reverse, but it had a prior standard gearbox. A lot of it otherwise was based on the Daimler. You'll notice, for instance, even the turret is Daimler-like except that the Daimler turret was a good deal higher than this. But that's how it was done. It has a crew of four, normally three in the turret, and a driver in the front here. Now, when the driver got into place, apparently, he had to remove the steering wheel to get in. It was that cramped. And it, they put a nut on the steering wheel, which he undid, removed the steering wheel, got into place, put the steering wheel back because a car without a steering wheel was a bit of a waste of time, and screwed the nut up again. And that's a particular feature of this vehicle. It seems a clumsy feature, but it was the essential way of getting in. There was also a driver's position in the rear, which would be used by one or other of the turret crew who get into this position to drive the vehicle out of a problem. Drive it in the other direction, in other words. He had two speeds, second and third, in the gear change, he wasn't allowed to go into the higher gears in case he got too fast. So he only had a clutch pedal, he didn't have any others. But he was mainly involved with steering, stopping and changing gear on the vehicle because his view was limited. And in any case, it was only done to get the car out of trouble. At least that was the idea. But that's the vehicle. It's armoured to about 14 millimetre. Quite odd that they didn't use the extra two millimetres of armour that they used on the, um, the Daimler. The Daimler had 16 millimetres, but this had 14. And as I say, it was quite heavy. It weighed 11.5 tonnes, which is quite a lot for a four-wheeled armoured car. I think the nearest is the big AEC, which was a similar sort of weight. Otherwise, most of the armoured cars that were in operation during the Second World War, which were mainly Daimler and Humber, were lighter, and they, ought, they needed to be as well. So that was the problem. Now, although the vehicle appeared in 1942 as a design, and entered, theoretically entered service in 1943, it was never actually used in action. In fact, the Eighth Army, who did reports on new vehicles, said that they felt it was obsolete already and that was before it ever went into action. So although a number were built for the British Army, it was never, ever used by the British Army during the Second World War. So it's quite interesting from that point of view. It's got a two-pounder gun with a coaxial bezel alongside it, and probably the two-pounder was one of the problems. It had really had its day by 1943, and the two-pounder was considered to be a bit under Wyoming, as far as an anti-tank gun's concerned, it had no other use. It couldn't fire HE worth the spit, so um, it was probably an out-of-date gun, and that's probably why it was declared sort of inefficient at the time. Although the Daimler had a two-pounder and was used for years after the war, until the Saladin came out, whereas this thing wasn't. What we did was sold 20-odd of them to the French, the French then used them, first of all, in North Africa, 
and then shipped the whole lot to Indochina, where they were fighting this war against the Viet Minh, and they, um, they left them there. So they can't have been that much use, but that's why they were done. The vehicle's a bit wider than the Daimler. It's eight foot nine wide, and it was said at one point that the track of the front wheels was wider apart so that when it followed a tank it didn't fall into a rut it had wheels in two ruts but whether that's really true or not I don't know but that's it the Coventry armoured car there was a Mark II which had a 75 millimetre gun but that involved first of all throwing one man out of the turret so you had a two-man turret and a driver a three-man car instead of four and a much higher turret of course to take the 75 so um, that's the only difference and that never developed any further. They only built one or two of them on the, on the prototype of the Mark I hull. But this is the Mark I, this is the version that came into production, but was never used at all, as I say, in action by the British Army. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please support us on Patreon. Subscribe to you, the um, channel as well, if you can. But support us on Patreon because the money we get from that helps us to keep these videos going and that will be something worthwhile. Thanks so much.